this is a shot he took flying over Rome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so he actually got in the plane sometimes, too, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. This, I don't know what plane it's up. I'm trying to figure this out. Here's the wing. There's the Pito tube, I think, yeah. there. Is that, it could be an airspeed indicator. I don't know. It would normally be at the front. <coughs> I don't think so. But anyway, here's uh, some Peters right there. Yeah. <laughs> So we move on to the exciting sections now. Um, the aircraft, the fighters that they used. This is the aircraft that they operated. Um, I've highlighted where my father came in. In November 42, they had Spitfire 5 Cs, 9s, uh, a few 8s and 7s later, and then a 45, they used the P-51 Mustang. <laughs> the Brits call it Mustang 4, it's the P-51D, of course. Um, and they use those of course, primarily to escort the, the bombers to Germany from Biggin Hill. So uh, here are the two they used: uh, Spitfire Five C. See the uh, the colours. <coughs> they they were dark earth and mid stone view models, and the underside was an azure blue. <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the flag on the tail? That's uh, British, uh, British markings, yeah, British roundel. Um, the British roundel, they put one on the tail here. <coughs> in, the, in the desert campaign, they used red spinners for some reason. Um, Did they have the one on top? Did it have a different engine than the one on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the Merlins. They all had the Merlins. I think mean, these were the Merlin 41, so they kept upgrading them throughout the war, so they just kept, keep getting more powerful. That's why they changed the marks. <clears throat> These were the two most popular, or the two most famous were the five and the nine. But they went up, you know, they all went, they had 24 different marks. Yeah. The highest one they ever used in the war was the Mark 14, right, Doug? Yeah, yeah towards the end of the war, which was uh, it's like something like 2,000 horsepower. <laughs> These things were more like probably 12, 1,200 maybe. <clears throat> There's Dad oh, on the job. It's a uh, Mark 5C three blade propeller. <coughs> And a huge cannon. Right, that's a 20 millimeter cannon. Um, here he is here. They had, um, you see that big thing there? Like you saw in the last picture, it's called a Vox uh, sand filter. And, they, and all the desert aircraft you see had these on the, because, because of the sand getting into the engine and the carburetor. So they used to use. <coughs> what's what's using, next to the cannon? Huh? What's what's next to the cannon on the outside? Out that right little bulb to the okay. right of the cannon. The recoil. No, this is uh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, Sam, but th this is the cannon. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about the wings. They had three main wings. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, the A wing, which had four Browning machine guns each side. So they had the B wing, which had one twenty millimeter Hispano cannon and two Brownings. So you had two 20 mil cannons, two brands. Then you've had the C wing, which was a universal wing, and that had, you could have two cannons, 20 mil cannons each side, oh. making yeah, four 20 millimeter cannons. <clears throat> so this one, if, as you can see, they blocked off one of the cannons. Yeah. Oh, so, that's what <clears throat> so this one would have been, even though this is a C wing, <clears throat> it's got the B wing configuration of two Hispano uh, 20 millimeter cannons and, and four brands. So, and the thing about the C-wing work was most popular was because it was, um, the gear was a lot stronger on there and it was raked forward about two inches uh, to stop these things going over on their nose. Right. So, uh, just, like, just like we do, right? <laughs> just like we know, yes. <laughs> yeah, we do the same thing, very prototypical. <laughs> is there a weight problem? Yes, yeah, it did affect the C, well, not so much that, but these, these folks' fielders affected the CG, of course. And they also slowed the plane down. But what could you do? You know, you, you, you get sand in the engine, you, you, you're done. In fact, the US squadrons, the 31st and the 52nd uh, fighter group, uh, were the, one of the Eagle squadrons. <laughs> what they did is they took one of the machine guns out to make the plane more maneuverable. <laughs> it's a good idea, actually. I'll move on. There it is, there. Yep. Did the Germans at that point were they worried about the bombing from the Germans? It was all. Who the uh, squad? Well, 
I didn't know they needed the cans to take out a heavy bomber. I didn't know if that was, why would they use a cannon as to multiple machine guns? Well, toy, well, because the Browning 303s weren't good enough, really. Yeah, if you think back to the Battle of Britain, the, the, the Brits had the 303s, but the Messrs. Schmidt 109s had tw one 20 millimeter cannon, and that thing tore them apart. It's incredible. If you ever see videos of, 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 of a cannon, a 20 mil cannon, we can imagine something like that with four of them. It, it, and look at the Mustangs, they had 50 millimeter cannons. Wow. <laughs> and the planes just disintegrated. You know? And then they got into the Lightning, which is unbelievable. Yeah, P 38. He's got some of them on here, too, actually. This is a Mark 9.